Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I feel rather humbled that I should even be up here in the room full of experts. I've been in this job for a few weeks, and I do not know anywhere near as much as all of you do. But I am delighted to be here, and I think we, it is a moment, I think it is a, today, it almost captures a way, a momentum for us to take this forward. I've had, you know, I've listened with, it's been a privilege to listen to Ray and Brian, I'm sure you would all agree, um, but it is an amazing um, moment for Bristol to be able to take this forward, to, to look at it in a very holistic way rather than, I mean, the, you, you know, there are some excellent initiatives that are coming up, but it's time that we join this together rather than almost some of us reinventing the wheel and making sure that we're all going in the same direction. So I think there is some excellent work and the vision of promoting Bristol as a restorative city um, is going to be built on very firm foundations. Both George and I are committed to promoting innovative approaches and working with people like you to do something different for the benefit of our communities of Bristol. And today's agenda is a great example of an issue which cuts across both of our roles and we have, we have a shared interest in making it happen. But I'd just like to explain to you why making Bristol a restorative city uh, matters to me and to share with you the, my vision for putting victims at the heart of the criminal justice system. I campaigned very vociferously on behalf of victims. I want to give victims a voice and you've heard that throughout today and I think it's a really, really important um, thing to take forward that restorative justice is a way of making sure that we listen to victims. Almost anything else through the court system, through all other processes, you, we don't actually quite get it. And I think today is a real sign, if we take nothing else from today, that we, we know we have to give victims a voice and we have to have a process that gives victims a voice. So it, RJ provides that opportunity. It helps a victim to reach closure, or at least moves them towards closure. Again, having listened to Ray and Bai, who I am just you know, blown away at, in fact, could not speak afterwards. Um, it has um, what, what they can do, and if they can do it with, with the, most, uh, you know, the most heinous crime, then for the rest of us, we can do it with much lesser crimes. Uh, it has a positive impact on victim satisfaction, and as we've seen that 85% of victims that have participated in RJ conferences were satisfied with the experience. And secondly, and I do want us to note that this is secondly, having just been to um, Nick's workshop on uh, impact, that secondly, it, offend, it enables offenders to face the consequences of their actions and the impact that it has upon the victim. This has been shown to be effective in motivating offenders to change. Ministry of Justice Research has associated uh, RJ with a 14% reduction in the frequency of offending. So it can contribute to preventing victimization in the first place. But let us always remember, and I know it's very measurable reoffending, okay, and that is something that no doubt I, I will regret having to say this, but at the end of the day, it's important that we remember that we, that we give victims the voice. So even if the offender does continue to reoffend, Okay, this is not a binary measure, it is the fact that the victim, if the victim is satisfied, then surely we must say, tick, job well done. And I hope you take that, you take that message away from you. So the Police and Crime Commissioner role is all about making the police more accountable to the communities they serve, shaping and influencing priorities and funding, and holding the police to account on behalf of the people of Avon and Somerset. And for the first time, my responsibility extends to community safety and community justice agencies. And most important for the first time, I have been given a specific duty to listen to the voice of victims. And from April 2014, I will receive money from the Ministry of Justice to commission services for victims. Please don't get carried away. It is not going to be a lot of money. So please don't start nagging before I've even finished. But we will be given, we will be given some money. I'm fighting very hard to be given more than they want. Um, that, that is, that's going to be my job, um, but you only have to listen to the politicians and read the papers to know that it will be a reduced figure. There's no doubt that my role is extremely challenging, um, but it is an enormous opportunity. 
I will be promoting a victim-led approach and putting victims at the heart of the criminal justice system. We are starting from a strong base, and you've heard today about the many excellent initiatives that are underway. The Constabulary has a strong track record in promoting the use of restorative justice. It actively promotes the use of RJ as an alternative disposal tool method for offenders for offences such as shoplifting, criminal damage, and some types of violent crime. The force now uses RJ. We're going to argue about this figure, okay? So I'm just going to say what I've got on my notes because that's the only thing I know. The force now uses RJ to deal with over 5,000 incidents per year, and this accounts for about 13% of all detected crime. The most common form of RJ used within the Avon Somerset is instant restorative justice, delivered by district officers as an alternative to the criminal justice system. But it's also used in a range of other ways that we have heard today. In 2008, Bristol was one of the six areas that took part in the national pilot for the Youth Restorative Disposal Scheme, which provides an alternative so that young people are not criminalised. And as an ex-youth magistrate, it's very important that we try and keep young people away from the criminal justice system for as long as possible. The Constabulary Promote RJ and their partnership initiative, some of us this afternoon have been privileged to hear Nick and tell us about the impact project that brings together offenders with their victims post-conviction in restorative conferencing at Bristol Prison. We've also heard from Helen about the Neighbourhood Justice Programme pilot in Bristol East, using RJ to deal with the harm caused to communities by crime and antisocial behaviour. And now, because it's been so, so successful, it's now being rolled out to Bristol North. But RJ is only effective when it is used appropriately and facilitated by officers or staff who have been trained. And one of the ways I can contribute the most to this aspiration of making Bristol a restorative city is by continuing to support and scrutinise the force in their use of RJ. I am quite clear it cannot be done on the cheap, and I am also quite clear that this is not an amateur sport. It has to be done by professionals, and, they, and it has to have constant training. Okay, it has to be... Nicking, taking it from, from Nick's uh, this, this afternoon, we have to have the right people for the right reasons doing this job. I'll use my role across Aiden and Somerset to ensure that the good practice developed here in Bristol is applied across the force and look to see how the approach can be developed to benefit communities across the whole of Aiden and Somerset. But as Jackie said, it is not a quick fix. It is not a gimmick. It is changing the culture. And I hope with all of us here that you are, we are on that journey, but we must now continue that. We have momentum from today, and I really want to continue that. Um, and in that way as well, we must not get tied up in knots about being too risk averse. Nick pointed it out, but I really, we can't wait until we're 100% sure before we do anything. We have to take risks. And I would be, and, and, and that is something that as a police and crime commissioner that I will be encouraging, that let's not wait until we have dotted every, every I and crossed every T. My role extends beyond the police to community safety and the criminal justice partners. And I work with Sally, Sally Lewis and counterparts on the criminal justice board to develop access to RJ at every stage of the criminal justice process. The government is proposing changes to allow sentencing to be deferred to allow RJ to take place. And I support any measure that allows the voices of victims to be heard and helps victims to reach closure that cannot be found in sentencing alone. It cannot be found in sentencing alone and it cannot be, be, be found in revenge. And I think we've heard that.